Everyone, so nice to see you back on the channel here. Kind of a fun video for me because someone commented, um, or somewhere I saw a comment from someone there like, you should do a video on renting an apartment as a gun owner. And I thought, oh, that's kind of an interesting one. So here's the caveat I'm gonna give you. Uh, I'll tell you a couple personal stories here, but um, it depends on what kind of gun owner you are. Like, do you own a Glock 19? And we're calling that a gun owner. You are a gun owner, but like, are we saying that's the standard? Or are we talking someone who would have enough gear to warrant having like a safe, for example? That's the direction I'm gonna go just because it feels a little bit more exciting to talk about that. So here's the biggest thing, guys discretion is gonna be of importance. And what type of apartment complex you live in is gonna dictate a lot. So do you live in like a, you know, there's like six apartments? Probably not gonna be that big of a deal, right? You got a couple neighbors, there's not a lot of, you know, traffic and eyeballs and, and, and things like that. But, so I used to live in a high rise. I used to live in Los Angeles for anyone. Um, well, most people probably don't know that. And um, I lived on the 23rd floor. So. In downtown LA on the 23rd floor, when I moved down there, I had a safe. Discretion is your friend. So I would advise finding moving oriented services, or if you're buying a safe as you move into a new apartment, have them have discreet packaging on top of that safe. So when my safe got delivered to my old building, it was a wine refrigerator. So apparently, you know, we just played off like, yeah, I'm a big wine guy, you know, and I got this wine fridge that needs to get delivered. So um, the safe came and you didn't see a safe. You just saw this cardboarded up thing. And that's what I would really recommend. It's not that it's necessarily problematic for your neighbors to know that you're a gun guy, but hey, if we could avoid that attention, then I would assume avoid that attention. So I would be discreet about things like that. Um, I would also be discreet about things like getting to and from your parking lot. So when I would, when I would have to go to the 23rd floor, uh, to the parking lot, which is on floor like three, you go, well, that means there's an elevator. I'm not that much of a paranoid person that I'm taking everything down the stairs. So my here's what I would do. I, I, I ignored some of my own rules here. I would go down to the lobby and I would get the luggage cart um, like you would see at hotels. So you go to New York, like Home Alone 2, right? And you see the luggage cart. Um, I would get that and I would load up all my bags and ammo and everything so I could just do one trip. I don't want to have to do multiple trips and everything. It seemed like a pain in the dick. So I would get the luggage cart um, and I would fill it with luggage. Now, um, one thing that is important for you to understand here, and this video has no point, this is basically just me telling some stories, but um, you will be amazed at how clueless most people are. Most people have are so involved in their own little world, they don't pay attention to anything that you do. So one day I'm coming back from the range, and I am, dra not right now, well, kinda, but, um, that day, you know, I was dressed like a real tactical asshole, right? I'm coming back and I got like my boots on and I got like some 5'11 pants or, you know, and like I clearly look like a guy who was shooting and I've got my rifle bags that are in the luggage cart and um, and these are just rifle bags. They don't look like, it looks like a great, it's like an OD green rifle bag. Like, can't we all agree what this is? Guy gets in the elevator with me and I'm like, shit, you know, because it's just awkward because you know they kind of want to ask you but they don't, you know. And um, so, so he, he looks at my stuff and he goes, how long you been playing? And I was like, playing? He goes, how long you been playing guitar? And I was like, ah, you know, a few years, man. Like, you know, and then I get off the elevator, go back to my apartment. So this bonehead thought that this OD green rifle bag was a guitar case, which is not even big enough to house a guitar in it. So how he came to this conclusion, I have no idea. The point to the matter is, People are so involved in their little bubble, they don't really stop to think about, man, that guy looks like he might have a gun in that bag. People just aren't paying attention, man. Like, people are not paying attention. I've seen a lot of wild shit in LA where you're like, once you know, you know, but you're like, man, no one has any idea that, that guy's got like a fucking sub gun in his backpack as he's out to like fucking tender greens in Culver City, California, which is a, kind of a hippie uh, health spot, but it is pretty tasty. Um, so that's one thing. I would also just recommend on more of a serious note, be cognizant of what sort of home defense weapons and ammo choices that you make. So if you're like, hey, I got neighbors 360 of me, which is probably not 360 because hopefully one side is a window that goes outside, but that probably just butts up against another building. So in reality, I probably got neighbors 
360 degrees around me, some of which are separated by very thin drywall. Hey, be cognizant of what sort of ammo choices that you're making. Um, you know, some really hot, you know, two, two, th green tip 223 or some shit. You go, eh, might not be the best home defense round, you know, out of a 16 inch barrel, knowing that like that's really thin drywall and there's like a family across that thin drywall, right? So think about these kind of, these just things you might want to think about, right? So maybe do a little bit of homework on certain, you know, ballistics of, of certain rounds as it pertains to things like drywall or doors, shit like that, you know? But guys, that's kind of the moral of the story here. I don't have any grand advice for you other than I would recommend be discreet. Um, if the building ever asks you, you know, you don't have to deny it. You're not doing anything wrong unless you are. But uh, last story I'll leave you with. So I, I have a, um, my home defense gun at, at that time was a Glock 34, right? I shot a lot of Glocks back then. So Glock 34 is my home defense gun. And I moved into uh, another building that was downtown LA. And um, I was the ninth resident. So I was the ninth person to move into the building. So the building is basically a ghost town. And I lived on the 18th floor at that time. Built building was maybe 24, 25 stories, something like that. And um, so a pretty big building, right? And I was the ninth person there. So there's no one in the building, right? It's like a ghost ghost town, really cool. And so I move in and I got a bunch of new, actually this furniture that you guys can see, which was, you know, kind of cool stuff. And and so the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, you know, the guy that works like the front desk concierge kind of guy that buzzes up your friends and food and everything. He's like, oh, I heard you got some new furniture. Can I come look at it? And I was like, yeah, sure, man, come on. And I was coming back from the gym in the morning and he comes up and he's walking around. I'm showing him the place and everything. And, and, uh, he, he walks, you know, I, I'm showing him like, you know, had a new bed and stuff and I'm like showing him, you know, that. And, uh, and he looks over and I see uh, funny enough on this table, um, he, he looks over and there's a Glock 34 with a Surefire X300 on it. And I see that his eyes <laughs> look at the, the 34 and then trying to figure out what to do because he was so uncomfortable, he immediately just looks up at the ceiling and just starts to focus on that. Now, mind you, there's nothing up there. There's not even a light, right? It just, just lamps. Like, there's nothing up there. But all of his concentration was focused on, look, anywhere other than this table where there's a firearm that I'm probably not supposed to know about, right? Because my whole walk-in closet was literally full of safes and ammo and, and shit. So no one ever saw that, um, which were discreetly delivered as a wine fridge. So again, guys, you can get away with just about anything. Do it do it legally, but just be a little bit discreet. And um, if your concierge guy ever sees your Glock 34 in a bedside table, have some fun with it. Because forever after that, he, ne he never asked me about it. But he was always suspicious of like who I was and what my background was. Like I was some Jason Bourne or something. And I, of course I wasn't. I was just a normal dude that was into guns. But he'd see me down in the lobby and he would always throw out these vague questions. He'd be like, what you getting into this weekend? And and I would just egg it on, just be an asshole. I'd be like, see where the day takes me, man. And, you know, and he'd see me and be like, you, you, got, you got any plans for this, you know, the, this Saturday? Like you got any, got any cool stuff going on? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, never would give him a straight answer. Drive, drive him nuts, you know? And it's just, so, look, guys, if your neighbor's ever, ever suspect, have some fun with it. At some point, you got to have some fun in life, you know? But beyond that, I have no advice to give you. Run an apartment, do legal shit, and be smart about it. Um, Weller 107, significantly overpriced for what it is. But if I can be honest, the first time I tried this, was a little sample bottle someone gave me, and I didn't like it. And uh, so I was reluctant to crack mine. I was like, I don't care. I don't even like that shit anyway. Cracked it the other day way better than I remember, much sweeter. It's a, it's a weeded bourbon. It was much better than I remember it being. So I was actually pleasantly surprised when I cracked that the other day. Maybe I'll have some tonight. I don't know. I don't give a shit. We'll see where the night takes me. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know? So um, subscribe to the channel. If you guys need real estate help, let us know. I'm supposed to say all that stuff at the beginning. I always forget. So I'm sorry, Crispy, who edits these videos. I'm done talking. I'll see you guys next time.